Well, we're ready to address homework 3.2, and you should have finished your lectures for 3.2 at this point. And I hope you're getting as much enthusiasm as I have for Newton's root solving methods, because uh, it really is powerful and it's very, very applied in today's world. Uh, we use it in aircraft design for making optimizations. This class, we look at one variable at a time, or a function of one variable, but in practice it has applications to functions of many variables also. So we're going to first go to the computer exercise 3.2. Remember, that's the second set of exercises in your book, and we'll do problem four. That'll be worth 10 points. Then I would like you to think back at when we started this class and we looked at square roots. Uh, we came up with a very simple algorithm to calculate uh, square roots very quickly. And we're going to use the same method, meaning Newton's method, to calculate cube roots. And you'll apply it to the cube root of 5. Uh, I want you to be able to get 15 significant digits of accuracy and then report the result. Okay, So we'll do that for 10 points. And then finally, there's an extra credit problem that is harder than problems A and B. It's problem 15 in your book, again, computer exercises. Uh, and I'm making this one worth 15 points if you do it because uh, it's worth it. It's actually very instructive and it is a little bit harder than those other two problems. So let's take a look at some hints, first of all, for computer exercise four, worth 10 points. And we're taking what looks like a very complicated expression, and we're trying to find out where the left hand equals the right hand side, you know, what value of x uh, makes that equal. Now, you have no guarantee there's only one place. There is very likely, in fact, there is more than one solution to this equation. But if we call the left side of this equation f1 and the right side f2, then you could apply a graphical uh, tool to be able to see where those solutions lie approximately. So we could call those F1 and F2. Uh, the Newton method is a root finding method, which means you're finding where the, where the, the function is, hits zero. In other words, what value of x produces that function to zero. Well, you can easily create such a function by just taking the difference of F1 and F2. And the solution you're interested is in is when F is equal to zero. Okay, so let's try this first step of graphing it, because graphing is always really a good idea. So I've graphed f1 and f2, and you can see the red line is one of the two functions, and the blue line is the other one. It's pretty clear there's two solutions here. There's one where they cross, that's going to be a root, and then there's one that looks like they don't cross but just barely touch. Now it looks pretty close to x equals 1, where that's going to happen, and maybe x is around 0.3, where this thing just crosses over. Now, when you find this solution, it shouldn't be too much trouble, but if you go after this one, I anticipate you're going to run into a little bit of trouble, because uh, that probably means you've got some slopes getting very close to zero, and newton raphson is a bit of trouble when that happens. So we'll, you need to be careful about how you apply newton raphs into this example. Okay, so go ahead and give that a shot, and let's move to hints for problem B. This is the one that we're trying to get the cube root of 5 to 15 significant digits, and you need to come up with an equation which has a solution of the cube root of 5. Remember, that's how newton raphson works. So what is that? You want uh, to come up with the equation where x cubed minus a equals zero. Well, the only time that happens is if x is the cube root of a. That will force that equal to zero. That means that you're looking at an appropriate function to apply the newton raphson algorithm for. Okay, so just remember the, the equation. You've got to be able to calculate f. You need its derivative, so that's not hard to do. And you need to also recognize, if you graph it, you'll notice this, that f has only one real root. Why is that? You know, I thought cubics had three roots. Well, that's true. In this case, two of them are complex, and one of them is real. And it's the real one that we're after. This is the formula for newton raphson So you now have the the function, you have its derivative, you can take its ratio, start off with some initial guess, 
and then calculate this expression to create a new guess, which then gets plugged back into the equation and you go around, around, around until you're convinced that you've got 15 significant digits of accuracy. So by now you should be able to look at certain measures like relative errors that will tell you whether or not you've got good accuracy or not. Okay, so that should get you for the required homework. Now I mentioned that problem C was a little bit harder. And that's because it's got some little nasty places that you've got to work out. And, uh, and so here's our function. Okay, it's got a mix of a polynomial with an exponential. And it seems like we can just apply newton raphson directly with, with that. Let's first graph it because it's always a good idea to graph things. And here we see that, yes, there is a root. This function does seem to be uh, hitting 0 about x equals 0. So that's probably what our answer is. But... Uh, I'm worried this is very flat in this area because as you recall from the lecture we're creating straight lines and trying to extrapolate on the straight lines and as those lines get very flat they become very inaccurate means to be able to predict where X is. So you should expect the newton raphson algorithm to have some trouble or like what I like to call over here some heartburn. Okay, so there's a start. Let's look at one more hints file, one more hints page anyway. And that is when you actually work it out, you're going to notice that the ratio of the function to its derivative are going to go to zero both in its numerator and its denominator. Meaning f goes to zero and x goes to zero, but f prime does also. Well, we're looking at the ratios of f and f prime and that uh, is going to produce some limit as the ratio numerator and denominator go to zero at the same time. Now just from your calculus class you ought to be reminded that that's kind of nasty to do that but there was also a tool you learned back in calculus called L'Hopital's rule that said yeah, we may have a way to handle that. So let's suppose you not only take the derivative you take a second derivative and the third derivative. So these aren't hard to do. And then you take a look at the ratio. Uh, you take a look at this f over f prime, which is something that we need in uh, the, the newton raphson algorithm. And as we take x uh, closer and closer to zero, you can check yourself, but both numerator and denominator are getting close to zero. Well, that's Hopital's application. So let's go ahead and differentiate numerator and denominator again and say f prime over f double prime will have the same limit as f over f prime. So let's do that again. Well, unfortunately, you're still going to have a problem with, since both of these go to zero when x goes to zero, uh, you're going to have to apply L'Hopital's rule yet again and differentiate a third time. So then look at the ratio of f double prime to f triple prime and now I think it's going to work out a little bit better. Okay, so give that a try, see what you get, and uh, I think you can solve this problem fairly in a fairly straightforward way. Don't forget, you've got to program this. So I am expecting MATLAB programs to be uh, to be able to be written and executed, and let me see what your output is and so forth, just as usual, uh, to get this complete. All right, good luck. See you in a few days.